hey, let's complicate things again. Hey everybody, this is Pookie's Avenger back with another episode of the $500 five-year $500 five Rags to Riches series. And today I want to talk about something a little bit more complicated. I gave a, a bit of a roundabout breakdown in the mentorship stream this morning, but I want to kind of make it as simple as possible. So uh, this strategy just involves um, position size allocation. That's all it is. It's not anything super, super technical. It's just a little bit of math and a, a bit of a perspective. So... Let me get my face out of the way. Um, and this is, well, let me get my, my picture out of the way too. If I can, sorry. Okay, so here's what we normally teach uh, new traders. And this is just to kind of get the mindset around um, allocation. Okay, so if you had a $1,000 portfolio, what we would typically teach is that you can break that $1,000 up into 10 10% blocks or slots. And then you can use, that's $100 each. And then you can use each of these $100 spots for different purposes. Uh, so for the 70-30 mix, for example, um, seven of those 10 blocks would be used for investments or dividends or whatever your passive income strategy is. And third, uh, I'm sorry, three of those blocks would be used for uh, speculation or, or some other strategy that didn't rely just on dividends and reinvestment. So that equates to seven 10% blocks and three 10% blocks. So 70%, 30%. Um, then under that 30% column, essentially, those three 10% blocks or $100 slots each, uh, you could then break those up into smaller buys or, or numbers of trades for the day, uh, so on and so forth. So the idea is just to, to establish a hierarchy for your risk exposure through um, breaking down your stuff. So uh, here's a more traditional view that we like to use. So when you make your contributions, we put 70% in investments, 30% in speculation. And then within that 30%, you're taking a third of that if you're on a cash account because you want to roll uh, settled cash every day. Um, you'd use 10% or one third of that speculative cash, uh, so 10% of your portfolio per day for that day's speculative trades. That way you always have fresh uh, cash settled. And then within that 10% for the day, so again, if I'm on a $1,000 account, I would trade with $100 per day up to $300 in rotation at any time, and $700 would be in the investment side. So just going to kind of revisit that a couple of times because um, it's, a, it's a pretty foundational concept. So within that 10% that I'm using per day, I might want to use 1% of my portfolio uh, per trade, um, up to 10 trades per day. Now that lets me take 10 losses in a row, and I'll only be down 10% total in my portfolio, right? I could take 30 of those. And then I would be at, you know, just the original 70% that I have for investment. So if I wanted to blow up my speculative account, I would be able to endure 31% losses. Um, now, I don't want to do that, obviously, but just to show that it, you know, that's just the allocation protecting you from uh, yourself, basically, because you're compartmentalizing your losses. So <clears throat> if I wanted to use 2% per trade, 2% of the portfolio value, and so in this case, if I was using $100 a day per trade, I would use $20 for a trade instead of $10. Uh, that would limit me to five trades per day because that still just has to add up to that 10% per day limit. All right, so that's the kind of the, the training wheels approach that we like to take. And most of you guys that are watching this, you're already kind of familiar with that. We, we did it with the 25, 25, 50 rule. Uh, if you're not familiar with that, I can teach that too. It's pretty easy. Um, however, it's time to level up a little bit. So uh if i have right for my my account right here that you guys can see it's roughly twenty eight hundred dollars right it's going up and down a little bit because there's a lot of drawdown in the market and all that good stuff but roughly twenty eight hundred dollars which means thirty percent of that is eight hundred and forty dollars roughly right that means that my thirty percent or three of these ten percent slots right here adds up to eight hundred and forty dollars generally speaking right? And the rest is in my investment side. So if I break that $840 up into three blocks and trade with one of the thirds every day, I'll always have settled cash every day, okay? And then when I'm using a third of this $840, then I would break that up further for the individual buys uh, for the trades, okay? 
Uh, feel free to rewind this as many times as you need to. I'm going to try to make this a relatively short video, but also to the point. So I'm going to walk through some examples. The general trade setup that I like to use is 1% uh, of my portfolio for risk, meaning that none of my losses will ever exceed 1% of my portfolio value. And I'll get into this strategy here in a second that uh, kind of delivers that result. And I want to double that for my profit potential. So my profit range is always going to be two times my risk. Okay, which means if I'm risking 1% max, I should receive 2% profit. Um, so in the case of this specific dollar amount, $840 for speculation, my risk should never be over $8.40 per trade, and my profit should always be $16.80 per trade if I use the second strategy that I'm about to teach. That gives us predefined outcomes, which gives us consistency, and we can extrapolate, and it's pretty cool. So let's dig into that, and I'll provide some examples here. Um, so if, uh, let me just move this over here, actually, and I'll just kind of walk you guys through this stuff. Uh, assume, okay, so there's two different strategies. The first one's up here, second one's down here. If I'm using $1,000 for all of these trade examples, right, just a fresh account, and I'm just kind of resetting it between explanations here. If I was to start with a $1,000 account, and I do maybe two or three trades on that account using uh, a stock which is bought at $2.50 with a $0.25 cent risk and uh, a $5 take profit. Uh, I'm sorry, um, uh, $0.25 cent risk and twice that for profit. And then a second trade with a $5 uh, market price with a $0.50 cent risk and a $1 take profit. So I'm using a 10% risk, 20% profit range for all of these. One of the stocks is going to be priced at $2.50. One of the stocks is going to be priced at $5. We're going to walk through two trades using these specific strategies. Okay, so you can kind of see the outcomes and the impact that this stuff can have. So strategy one, this is the, the default strategy that we that we typically teach. Okay, just this right here where you break it up and you use, uh, uh, you know, 10% per day, 1% per trade. Okay. Um, so again, using that rule, that gives me $10 per trade. So for each of these trades, I'm just going to look at $10, okay? Uh, with that $10 for the $2.50 stock, uh, $2.50 stock, uh, with a stop loss range at $2.25, so $0.25 cents down, $0.50 cents up for take profit is $3, 10% risk, 20% reward, all three of these, okay? Um, <clears throat> if I spend $10, I'll be able to buy four shares at $2.50 per share, okay? That's pretty consistent here. The first potential outcome is a loss, okay? That means that all four shares that I bought take a loss of 25 cents per share each for a total loss of $1, okay? 25 cents times four is $1 loss. If I win, and I'm using two times that range as a profit, all four of those shares should gain a 50 cent per share profit for a total of $2. So there's two outcomes here. I either lose a dollar or I gain $2, okay? Then we reset, we completely reset. Brain, portfolio, everything. And then if I look at a stock which is $5, and I determine the stop loss should be at $4.50 and the take profit should be at $6, so again, 10% down for risk, 20% up for reward, so 2 to 1, this will allow me with $10 <clears throat> to buy two shares at $5 per share. And again, if we look at the two outcomes, it's either going to be a loss or a profit. If it's a loss, the two shares will take a loss of $0.50 cents per share for $1, and if it's a win, the two shares will gain a profit of $1 per share for $2. So these two trades have the exact same outcome, even though they have different prices, okay? Uh, the reason for that is because they're both using a 10% risk, 20% reward, and it's proportional to the dollars invested. So you're looking at a percentage return on dollars invested, and that's where this strategy shines really well. Um, and if you can make your position sizes consistent, it works out pretty well. Um, now let's take a look at a third trade using that same approach, and we'll kind of see where there's a little bit of variance here. So if we look at the stock at $2.50 again, again, fresh start, $10 in our pocket, we're just looking at a stock that's $2.50, but we're going to move the stop loss a little bit. Instead of 10%, we're going to use 8%. We're going to make it a little bit tighter, which means double that is 16%, so we're going to move our take profit down a little bit. So it's just a tighter trade, so 8% risk, 16% reward potential. One of two outcomes is going to happen. I'm going to be able to buy four shares with $10 at $2.50 per share. The first outcome is a loss, at which point four shares that I've bought will take a loss of $0.20 cents per share for a total loss of $0.80, cents, okay, as opposed to the dollar. So you're already seeing a difference. If I win, 
those four shares instead gain 40 cents per share for a profit of 160 instead of two dollars so you can see that there's a discrepancy there if i move the trading range the risk and the reward percentages i will have a different end result which means that there will be inconsistent profit taking or losses and if you take one trade that gets you a smaller profit and you take another trade that gets you a larger uh, loss using this strategy you're going to get uh, potentially inconsistent results and that's kind of where it's a good starting point that's why we teach that strategy first just because it teaches you consistency and to focus on the percentage return um, and ideally if you're trading appropriately that shouldn't really happen that often and if it does that's something we can fix but um, you know that's that strategy in action so let's look at the other strategy where I calculate uh, my max risk and then determine how much my position size should be if I want a consistent outcome so if I'm using a thousand dollar portfolio and I determine my max risk will only ever be 1%, in which case it'll be $10. And I'm looking at that same stock that's $2.50 per share. And I determine the stop loss to be at $2.25, so 10% down or $0.25 cents down. My take profit being twice that to the upside, so $0.50. Cents. I, I know that my risk range, right, the entry to stop loss is $0.25, cents, which means... In order to achieve that $10 max risk, I'm allowed to have up to 40 shares, okay? So if I take $10, right, which is my 1% max risk, and I divide that by the risk range, I get the number 40, and that's the number of shares I can buy, okay? Which will cost me at $2.50 per share, $100, okay? So I'm already committing 10% of my portfolio into this one trade with a max risk of 1% of my portfolio and a determined profit of 2% of my portfolio. So it's a little bit of a numbers game here. So when I buy the 40 shares at $2.50 per share, I pay $100 and I get the shares. Then I have those two outcomes. So if it's a loss, all 40 of those shares are gonna take a loss of 25 cents per share for a total loss of $10. If I win, those 40 shares instead get a profit of 50 cents per share, giving me $20. And I knew that beforehand because I knew my max risk was only ever gonna be $10 and my profit would be twice that. So now let's look at a different stock, $5 per share. And I've again, I've just got my $10 or 1% max risk. This is the 1% rule. If I determine my stop loss should be 10% down at 50, I'm sorry, $4.50, and my take profit is going to be twice that to the upside at $6 or a dollar profit, I know that my risk range is then 50 cents, which means well, across 20 shares at 50 cent risk range, I'll have my $10 limit, my max risk of 1%. So I buy the 20 shares at $5 per share. It costs me the same, $100. Uh, that's, again, because my risk range is the same in this point. So you get, I'll get to that in a second. <clears throat> then the two outcomes. I can either lose or I can win. If I lose, the 20 shares that I own take a loss of $0.50 cents per share, which totals up to $10. So my loss is consistent. If I win, those 20 shares instead get a $1 per share profit up to $20 because that's twice the risk. All right, so, so far... Trade one, trade two are the same, just as they were, but they have different position sizes. Um, so let's look at a third trade, because remember, this is where we got tripped up up here, and it gave us different results. So let's look at it now. So trade three, let's just say, again, we're looking at a $2.50 stock, but we've moved the stop loss up $0.05, cents, which means we move the, the take profit down uh, $0.10. Cents, so we have an 8% risk range, 16% reward range. So again, it's the same parameters as above, but I want to see if we're going to get the same result or a different one. So in this case, my risk range is 20 cents, okay? And 20 cents out of $10 can occur 50 times. So I know that I'd need 50 shares to reach this $10 max loss, uh, max risk, I'm sorry, at a 20 cent risk range. And this is something you can pre-calculate for whatever dollar amounts you want. It's pretty cool. Um, now, if I buy 50 shares at $2.50 per share, my position size changes, right? Now it's costing me $125 and I'm getting 50 shares instead of 20 or 40 shares. So let's look at the two outcomes. If I lose, all 50 shares take a 20%, or I'm sorry, a 20 cent loss for a total of $10. If I win, all 50 shares walk away with a profit of twice that, 40 cents per share, for a total profit of $20. So what I've done here is rather than adjusting my PL, I've adjusted my position size to guarantee the same PL across all these trades. And the reason that works is because we're focusing on the risk range and scaling the position based on that rather than 
focusing on the position size and then letting the profit or loss scale based on the uh, percentage range of the risk reward. So it might seem a little bit complicated and feel free to rewind that if you want. Um, but basically the, the very core guts uh, mechanism here is I'm identifying what 1% of my portfolio is and then I'm identifying the risk range. And then that tells me how many shares I need to buy uh, to exceed that, uh, or to reach that, that loss level at 1% of my portfolio in size. And then I buy those shares. And then if I lose, I know for a fact I'm going to lose 1% of my portfolio maximum. And if I win, I'm going to gain 2% of my portfolio maximum. And if I, that's, of course, if I don't let things run. But it's a very easy way to predetermine your targets, your, uh, your profits, and your losses. And it's just nice. It's, it's a beautiful thing, right? Because remember, if we look over here, okay, and if we do things consistently, we know there's only ever really going to be a few different outcomes depending on the number of trades we take for the day. So if I can calculate exactly how many uh, dollars and cents I'm going to have at the end of every single trade, I know every single combination I'll have for that day for my profit and loss, minus, you know, holdings drawdown and stuff like that. But for realized P&L, I know exactly what I'm going to get at the end of each trade. And there's a lot of power in that. But if you're not sure how to get there, uh, please ask questions about this particular strategy. This is uh, the, the beginner strategy, and this is a little bit more advanced when you want to step up your consistency. Uh, now, it does require, of course, bigger position sizes in some cases, uh, depending on the risk range. <clears throat> Smaller the risk range, the more shares you got to buy, and vice versa. Um, but the, the dollar P&L is 100% consistent across the board, unless you get caught up in like a weird halt or something like that. But um, it's nice. So again, please ask questions. Make sure you watch this over and over and over again until it sticks. This is the next evolution in position size management. Um, and we, again, we start at that 10%, you know, 33%, break it up into 1%. Those are kind of the, the beginner guidelines. But um, once we want to develop that consistency a bit further and we have a, a little bit stronger risk tolerance uh, in a healthy way, <laughs> um, then we can add that extra step in and make sure that we have defined outcomes at all times. And that's really cool. So I'm going to end this recording here. Thank you all. I appreciate it. I try to keep this under 20 minutes. So again, make sure you watch this over and over and over again. If you have questions, please ask. It's a little bit of a complicated topic, so I want to make sure that you guys all understand it. Hopefully the examples here helped. I can always post these in the chat too if you're ever curious. And I will see you guys next time. Thank you and enjoy your weekend. Bye.